Let's continue looking at objects. Today we're looking at methods, abstract or real life. When we learn about methods, we learn about constructors, deconstructors, setters, getters and encapsulation. But in this lesson, we want to give you a real life example. So what would we do if we we're setting up a system, for example, creating students? Then we'll look at the theory afterwards. We spent the last four years trying to help people learn by creating videos on YouTube. Now we're thinking of extending this by creating courses and making them available online. So if you're interested, let us know. What would you like to learn? So let's look at our real life example. So for a student class, we want to be able to create a student. We want to be able to update what units they want to take. We want to enter the marks for those units and we want to see our grades. So our marks and some type of average of these marks. So at the end, we end up with the student, their ID, then maybe their nickname, their name, the average score for all the marks of the units. So the student's gonna take more than one subject. So we get an average score. And then depending where the student um, studies, there'll be some type of grade, either like A, B, C, D, or 4.0, 3.5, etc. So what's important here is we've got the student and we've got their average score. If we've got that, we can calculate anything else from that. So let's have a look at the code. We start off with a cut down version of our student we used previously. Here we create two students, students one and students two, called Cy and John. When we print the details, we've got their ID number, their nickname, and we've got an empty dictionary where we're gonna put their marks. And then we've got their average score, which we've called grade, which at present is zero. So this is the code we used before. Now, what we need to do, our goal, we need to create a student, student one and two, which we've already done. So that we can mark off. We want to enter marks for units. So we've got three units, 101, 102, 103. And we've got the grades for the two students of these three units. So if we look at our grades, we can enter them. Let's put some grades in. So we've got student one score, student two score, and let's, we can put the print details after these scores. So print details for student one and student two. Now we run that, you can see we've already got the scores in because we've entered the scores for student one and student two. So that's entered our marks for the units. See our average grade. Now, what would we normally do in our code? Normally we would just create a function to calculate the average score of these marks. So we've got 80, 75, 70, the average would be 75. 75, 80, 85, the average would be 80. So how would we do that? Well, we could create a function outside the class or we could create one inside the class, which would be a method. So let's create a method inside our class. So we've already got our grades. So all we really need to do is calculate the average. So let's define our method and uh, let's say calc grade. We just need self and we're going to use the attributes that are already in the class. So we don't need to worry about passing anything. So what have we got? We've got the grades. Oh, we've actually got the scores, which is the dictionary. And inside the dictionary, we've got the unit and the marks. So we want the values. So we can look at the marks 
to equal the values inside the dictionary. Now we've got the marks and what we've now got is a list. So the list would be like 80, 75, 70. So to calculate the grade, the average if you like, we're going to put dot grade and then that is going to equal, we want the sum of the marks, that's all the values in the list, and then we want to divide by, well if there's three set of scores, we want to divide by three, so we can divide by the sum of the marks. So now we've calculated the grade, and it's in this grade attribute. So now when we print the details, We've got the student ID, the name, their actual marks, scores inside the units and their final grade. Let's run that and you can see we haven't changed anything it's because we haven't called calc grade. So in this case, we, what we can do is we can actually call calc grade on each student. So student one dot calc grade. Don't need to pass anything. Student two dot calc grade. So you could choose that when you enter scores, for example, you automatically updated and called this method. So it will calculate the grade. So in a normal system, when you entered the scores, then you may automatically update it. But in this case, we're just going to call calc grade and we run that, you see Psi, Psi is marks, and then the average of these three, 80, 75, 70, is 75. John, average is 80. So you can see here, we're calling methods the same when they're in classes as we would do functions. So there's not really that much difference from classes than we already know. So when we look at an example in code, it doesn't look too complicated. But what about all that theory? Well, let's have a look. We had constructors. So constructors create the object or the instance of the object. So when we create the student or the dog or person, whatever we're creating, we call the constructor. So we've just used the INIT initialize method. So that's a constructor. Constructor means just to construct. So we've already done that. We don't need to worry about it. Destructors. Well, if we create these objects and we create many, then they're going to be stored in memory. So we need to delete them. Well, destructors are used in other languages such as C++, but in Python, not really. Python does a lot of the garbage cleanup itself. So we don't really need to worry too much about the destructor. Setters and getters. When we set something, so for example, we set the marks or the set the student's name, we've already got this inside our code. And get, when we want to get a value. So the set and get, we already kind of do already. Now the difference really with Python than other languages, we can explain when we explain encapsulation. So when we deal with object oriented programming, encapsulation means we can use these attributes and methods and keep things inside the class. So in other languages, we have methods and attributes we use inside the class, but we don't want other people outside the class to access it. So for example, if you had a class about like a bank account or even the student marks, you don't want outside methods to access the bank account or the student grades. So we can have these private attributes and methods inside our class. So other attributes, methods, people outside can't access them. Now Python, we don't really have this. So we don't need to use the setters and getters. and We don't really need to worry about this private and public. Now, we do need to think about this when we create our code. So for example, 
the administration of student marks might be done by one department but the person who gives the grades is the teacher so the teacher could probably only see in an interface how to enter the marks but they don't do anything else and then that system would be run by the administrators and then they sort out how the students are uh, notified of their grade check all the grades etc so if you like the people involved only see what they need to see and they only change what they need to change so we have like write access read access read only access so in a computer system we need to know who can access what who can read what who can change whatever so obviously students can't see their grades until they're sent and they certainly can't change them the teacher can't access the system except for entering the grades so this whole design of people who cannot access anything people can access but just read people can enter data that's limited what they can enter and then at the top level this administrator who can do anything now this is very important in computing so when you write your code you have to think what methods inside the class can access what data and what functions outside can change this data and how so we have to consider this when we're writing a code finally although we don't see them there are already um, predefined methods in our class so the init method already exists and then we can change it so we can change these underscore methods into in our class but we don't need to so we don't need to worry about them so we won't don't forget if you like the video please click the like if you haven't already why not subscribe and if you want to keep up with this series and get notified when the videos get released, please click that notification bell.